joining me over here at Ag Aviation Adventures. Today we are talking GMOs or genetically modified organisms. What does that mean exactly? Well, the DNA in a plant is being altered. They are actually taking foreign genes and they are inserting them into plants. So why would they do that? Well, there are a lot of different reasons why they would do that. And a lot of the reasons are very beneficial. So you can have a plant with genes in it that ha make it so that the plant is drought tolerant. And you can take those genes and you can insert them into a plant that's not drought tolerant. Therefore, making that not drought tolerant plant now drought tolerant. So, how many crops out there are actually genetically modified? Well, there's only 10. They are alfalfa, apples, canola, corn, cotton, papaya, potatoes, soybeans, squash, and sugar beets. So, if you're at the store and you see, I don't know, something like water and it says non-GMO, well, that's a given. Because it never was GMO. There's no GMO option for it. Now, going back to the benefits of GMO crops, besides putting in genes that make some crops drought tolerant, you can also make them flood resistant, insect resistant, disease resistant. You can make them herbicide tolerant as well as you can actually increase the nutritional value of food by inserting different genes into it. And I've seen this firsthand. Uh, I've gone to places to spray and literally have gotten out of the airplane and it is dry as can be. The grass underneath my feet is crunching and it is brown. I mean, the grass is just dead. However, 25 yards away is a cornfield and this cornfield is as happy as can be. It is green and it's going to have awesome yield for that year yet they're in a drought. I've also seen it in what's called BT corn, and that is insect resistant. Uh, this just happened this year where there were people that had planted non-BT corn, they had planted conventional corn, and I was out spraying it with insecticide because it had insects in it. But literally the cornfield next to it is BT corn, and None of it was sprayed. So by putting GMO plants in the ground, there is now an option where you don't have to spray them nearly as much, if at all, for certain things. Uh, also with that herbicide tolerant, this is where you have like Roundup Ready, if you've heard of that, Roundup Ready crops. The active ingredient in Roundup, what they're talking about is glyphosate. And so these crops, they don't die if you spray them with Roundup or with glyphosate, but all of the weeds die because the weeds are not Roundup ready. Now I will say this, weeds are becoming more and more resistant every year to glyphosate. And this would really happen with anything. I mean, GMOs have been around since the mid-90s, and over time, you keep spraying weeds with glyphosate, and they are going to become resistant to it. Every year, a little bit more and a little bit more, but that would happen with anything if you continue to spray it. So if we didn't have glyphosate around, we didn't have these GMO crops and Roundup Ready crops, we would be spraying it with something else. and. I think that with whatever we'd be spraying it with would also become tolerant to it as well. 
But when you have something like Ground Up Ready, it's great because you're not having to go in there and till the field. So if you're not tilling, I don't know if you've heard anything about no-till programs. It's just, it's a lot better for the earth and for the soil than just going in there and tilling all the time and plowing. But if you're not having to till because of Roundup, then you're gonna keep around beneficial insects in that soil. There's gonna be increased organic matter, better moisture retention as well as less soil erosion. Not to mention the fact that you're not going out there all the time and tilling. So CO2 emissions and footprint is going to be way less by using something that's Roundup ready. And Roundup's just one example of the herbicide tolerance because now they have a lot of other things that's not necessarily related to glyphosate and trying to get away from that and try some other stuff as these weeds become more resistant to glyphosate. I think that there's a lot of negative, I don't know, like a negative connotation around genetically modified crops. And I don't know why. Um, there have been, I mean, there's literally been thousands of studies done on GMO crops to make sure that they are safe and that there's not any adverse effects from eating them or having them around. And there have been a lot of people to look at these studies, such as the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Health Organization, American Medical Association, I mean, just tons and tons of these. And these guys have all looked at thousands of studies, and they have all deemed that GMO crops do not pose any more of a risk to us than any other food that's grown. So I, I just personally don't understand uh, what, why people are so against it, because I think that it really has some great benefits. And if we weren't doing genetically modified organisms, then I think we'd be in a lot different of a place. I mean, the GMO thing has been around way before the mid-90s. We just weren't doing it maybe with so much technology and science. But for hundreds of years, people have been genetically modifying crops so that they are more drought tolerant or that they have a better yield, that kind of stuff. And so it's just now that they're really getting into the science of it and they can do it in the laboratory and really dial it in, which is pretty cool. You may say, well, okay, but the EU, they don't allow GMO crops, so they must not be good. Well, you're right, the EU doesn't. They only produce roughly 5% of their soybean beans, for example. And soybeans are a big one. Those are round, round up ready. The EU produces 5% of their needs. Well, the other 34 million tons of soybeans that they use, those are imported. And those are GMO crops. So the EU is actually one of the largest consumers of GMOs. So even though they don't allow you to grow them there, they still use them. I mean, there's currently around 70 GMO products that are authorized for import into EU. And so I think that that's a little bit skewed. I, I think that honestly it has a lot to do with politics and public opinion over there on why they don't allow them to be grown. Uh, there is However, one crop, it's a, it's a form of maize. It's grown, I believe, in Spain and Portugal, and it is GMO. So they do have one crop that is technically GMO, but other than that, they have outlawed it. They don't allow it, but they import the hell out of GMO crops. It's great for us 
because we grow them and we import them, or rather we export them over there. So definitely good for us. And if they outlawed it here, that I mean that'd be pretty bad. And uh, you know they they'd be going to South America then to get their crops, and we would be out of it. Kind of like what's going on with the tariffs right now. I mean, it's hurting a lot of farmers, um, and that's, I mean, that's a big part of the economy, and so they're feeling it right now. It would just be bad all around, but I guess here's my opinion. I think that the GMO thing is really based on a lot of personal feelings and not so much of the science that's out there. Because I think that if you look at the science and you study it and you form your own opinion, I think you can see, like, you know what, this, the benefits are there. I mean, they're, they just, they really are. They're a very beneficial crop and a very beneficial thing to have around. And when you don't see any adverse effects from it, there's nothing that's been linked that says, you know, I, I, I know people, as I read about it, they're like, oh, I have allergies because it, or because of it, or my kid is autistic. And I just, I don't see the link there. I did, if I'm looking at the science of it, I'm not seeing any link between this kind of stuff. And so that's where I say, it, you know, just look at the science. But like I've said before, I'm hoping that I am just starting this conversation for you. And with the internet, you can read a lot. So hopefully this just opens it up and says, you know what? Because I saw an article that said that these are bad, and then all of a sudden all these people jumped on this bandwagon and they all say it's bad, maybe I'm going to look into it myself and form my own opinion on it. I, I'm really, that's kind of what I'm hoping for you to do. Because don't take my word for it. There's a lot of other words out there to take. But uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Uh, you know, I appreciate you guys watching and listening to me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures. Fly low, fly fast.